Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Graceology with Gwen Smith podcast. I'm Gwen Smith, and I am so glad you've joined me today. Around here, we have fun, faith-focused, grace-filled conversations, all to help you know and trust God more. Our discussions are honest, often humorous, and always practical, and they're going to encourage you in meaningful ways to live out and lean on the grace of Jesus in the midst of cluttered, messy days. You got any of those? I know I do, and I can't wait to get to today's conversation, which is all about experiencing the Holy Spirit as a constant companion. Today, my guest is the one and only Anne Graham Lotz. Her late father, Billy Graham, called his daughter Anne the best preacher in the family. For decades, she has spoken all around the globe with wisdom and the authority of years spent studying God's Word. The New York Times named her one of the five most influential evangelists of her generation. And today, y'all, she is hanging out with you and me to talk about what she's been learning about the Holy Spirit. How cool is that? Many of us don't quite know what to think or how to respond when it comes to the Holy Spirit because there's so much confusion and mystery and misunderstanding. Anne shares about this in her new book, Jesus and Me, where she writes, One thing I know for certain, He is not an optional extra in my Christian life. He is a divine necessity. Priscilla Shirer testifies that the truth Anne shares in her new book has not just come from deep study, but also from the personal experience of a woman who has learned the rhythms of grace through a lifetime of faithfulness. And I couldn't agree more. So you might want to just hunker down, friends, and prepare your heart, because this fascinating Graceology episode is going to help you more fully understand the role, power, and person of the Holy Spirit. Well, hello, Anne Graham Lotz. Welcome to the Graceology Show. I am so excited to have you today. Gwen, thank you. It's my pleasure to be with you. <laughs> well, around here, the way we get started with my guests is we have a fast, fun favorites round to get to know you in a real casual kind of girlfriendy way. So are you ready? <laughs> you know, I'll try to be. I don't know. <laughs> let's, let's see. We'll, we'll start off pretty easy. Okay, here we go. And coffee or tea? A coffee. What's your favorite sport to watch? Anyone that my grandchildren are playing in. Good answer. Okay, sweet or salty? Salty. Where are you in birth order? Second. On a scale of one to ten, how good are you at crossword puzzles? (laughs) It's been so long since I've done one, I would probably say I'm below a five anyway. (laughs) Okay. I I love words, but you know, when your pressure is on, when you're trying to find the right one, so. Girl, I get it. I get it. Okay, so what is your signature dish for family gatherings or potluck dinners? You know, I don't think I I love to cook. So I had 30 members of my husband's family for Labor Day yesterday, and that's not even touching the big crowd. But anyway, 30 of them. So I served uh, fried chicken and Eastern Carolina barbecue, coleslaw, baked beans. Wow. uh, all sorts of chips, fresh fruit, and then for dessert, we just had banana pudding. So, oh, so that's, my. that was for Labor Day, but there are other things. I, I love to cook, and I love to have the family around the table. When we were, my children were growing up, sitting around the table was when we had our discussions. Our devotions were more like table discussions, yeah. you know, so we still do that. And so food is a big part of a lot's family, I can tell you. I love it. Same, same, same for the Smith family. All right, Anne, what is your favorite hymn or worship song? I love Give Me Jesus. Um, probably love it most when Fernando Ortega sings it. It just tugs all the strings of my heart. I also love an old British song that Keith Getty and I were just talking about. And, and it was wonderful because he went to the piano we have in the office and he, he played it from heart. But it's called All That Thrills My Soul is Jesus. Oh. I don't think I've ever heard it sung in America. And when I requested it, and I remember the last time I requested it, I was in Birmingham, England, and they didn't know it. And yet it was it was from there. So as we sang it, which we did, they I heard more and more people singing. I think it was one that was deep down in their memory box that they had forgotten. But the words are precious. So. Well, I can't wait to look it up because I don't even know that one. And I'm super excited to figure out more about that. Okay, so the next question is, on a plane, are you window or aisle? Oh. What Winnie the Pooh character do you most identify with? 
<laughs> I haven't thought about Winnie the Pooh characters <laughs> in so long. I don't think I would be Eeyore, but um, I'm not sure which one I would be. I, I will have a pass on that because it's been so long since I've read Winnie the Pooh. I'm not sure I can remember them all. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. What is your go-to skincare item? Go-to skincare item. At this age, sweet Gwen, I have a whole closet full of skincare items. <laughs> so it's not one. It's multiple ones. I do use lots of moisturizer. Yes. Before makeup, after makeup. I use a night cream now 24-7. There you go. <laughs> You know, so hydrate, so hydrate, hydrate. Be, yeah, that would probably be the thing. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, are you mountain or beach? Uh, both. Same. I, I love both. I was raised in the mountains, but I go to the beach whenever I can. And, and I think there's something about the grandeur of the mountains and the ocean that uh, it's a almost a worshipful experience. You know, I love I love both. Same, same. I agree. Okay, are you an early morning girl or a late at night girl? I'm not an early morning person, but I have made myself to be one because I felt God called me to get up and spend time with him in the morning. So that was one of the struggles I had this past year with all of my medications and also what I was going through that I could not do early morning, but I've started back. So this morning, you know, by seven, I had already walked my mile and a half and have my devotions and get my cup of coffee at the local coffee shop. And so I, I love the early morning hours, but I had to really make myself be that it's it's naturally I think I would I would sleep in and I would stay up late yeah that's that's more my tendency (laughs) okay how tall are you uh, you know, I'm shrinking. <laughs> Same. I'm five nine and a half. Now I'm probably closer to five nine. Okay. <laughs> What's your guilty pleasure? Guilty pleasure. I love to sit in the sun. Ooh, nice. And so, the final question in your fast fun favorites round, Anne, is fill in the blank. Grandchildren are. Grandchildren are a blessing. Oh. A gift from God. And I only have three, and they're three girls. And they're absolutely delightful. They are, um, they're beautiful. They are very sweet. They love the Lord. Each one has led one of their friends to Christ, more than one. They read their Bibles. They know how to hear God Mm. speak to them. They know how to pray and get answers. Uh, My youngest one is sort of a little warrior princess. She can really pray against, you know, the the forces that sometimes come against us. And she's, anyway, they're each, each one amazing. So would love to have had more, but the Lord's blessed me with three and, and they're precious. So, and they live fairly close by about 20 minutes away. Okay. That's an extra blessing right there. (laughs) Well, that's so wonderful. I feel like I know you way more and I know my Graceology community does too. This was fun. And this was fun. (laughs) Hey friends, Gwen here. Before we jump into today's episode, I want to talk to you about Bible study. Here's what I know for sure. Everything about your relationship with God will grow stronger when you're intentional to get to know Him more intimately by studying His Word. And the thing is, it doesn't take that long to open your Bible up every day and read. When you have a plan and a community to connect with, Bible study becomes more routine and faith becomes more authentic. But you've got to take the time to prioritize studying the Bible so that you can move forward growing in faith and experience the power, perspective, and peace that God provides and that we all want. Your relationship with the Lord grows stronger when you spend regular time in the Word. And I want to show you how to establish a simple and effective process for studying the Bible. I have a free online Bible study that will show you exactly how to get started. I'm going to walk you through how to study the Bible using an inductive method that can be done in the comfort of your own home and in a time frame that fits with your personal schedule, even if you've never done a Bible study before in your life. Go to gwensmith.net slash psalmadventure. That's gwensmith.net slash psalmadventure to sign up for my free online Bible study. And I promise you'll walk away with a clear understanding of how to get started with a personal inductive Bible study plan. Don't wait. Everything about your relationship with God will grow stronger when you're intentional to know and trust Him more by studying the Bible. Now, for for those listeners who might not know you, would you go ahead and just introduce yourself more formally to my Graceology community? Uh, My name is Ann Graham Lotz, and... 
you know, that's a hard thing to do. What do I say? I'm a mother of three. I have three children, and I've been in ministry. I started teaching a Bible study fellowship class about uh, over 40 years ago in 1976, actually, and it immediately filled up with 500 women, and I, I kept a capacity class with a huge waiting list, spun off other classes for 12 years, And so that our town now, Raleigh, North Carolina, is saturated with Bible studies, either there are about 10 Bible study fellowship classes, but they're also great big classes that sort of mimic Bible study fellowship and churches have Bible studies and neighborhoods have Bible. It's really, really wonderful. Um, But after 12 years, I left that and went into an itinerant ministry called that I called Angel Ministries, just took my initials, A-G-L, put the N and the E in between. And angels were messengers of God. They only went where God sent them. They spoke to the people God put in front of them. It could be one person or the whole world. And they only gave out God's message. They didn't give their own opinions or politics. They just, and so that's what I felt God called me to. And so I did that for 12 years. And then I got frustrated with the things that were offered women. I was Mm -hmm. on a lot of platforms and women, Gwen, seemed to be dumbed down, you know, like, uh, and I felt women could we have the the capacity to be real disciples and jesus had women who were disciples they weren't the the 12 of course but but they were women who tracked with him and cared for him and seemed to understand more of what he was saying even than his disciples at a certain point when they knew he was going to the cross and the disciples couldn't get it but but i felt so i started just give me jesus revivals for women primarily although the doors were open we always had a mixed audience but sure. um and i did that for 12 years and went all over the world with that arenas uh, interesting to filled and some overflowed in big arenas, United Center in Chicago and the Air Canada Center in Toronto and the Key Arena in Seattle and just Phillips Arena in Atlanta, all, all over, as well as the big arenas outside this country. And the Lord, although I never saw revival like we all long for, you know, where mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit comes down and just changes a whole nation. Or, but I did see revival take place in individual lives. And hundreds, if not thousands of people experienced personal revival as a result of what we did. And then stepped out of that and felt God called me out to really care for my husband. And my husband was going into poor health. And so for three years, I stopped traveling and speaking and stayed home to take care of him. But it, but I didn't feel called out of ministry. And so the Lord helped me focus on uh, social media and radio, things I could do from here. Sure. So videos and, and writing. And so I kept up my ministry, but while I could stay home and take care of my husband. And four years ago, last Monday, excuse me, last Saturday, I uh, found him unresponsive in our pool and, and he was rushed to ER. And two days later, we took him off of life support. And so on August 19th, 2015, he went to glory. And um and then, you know, last year, my, my beloved father went to heaven. He was 99, so we were expecting it, but not, not then. You know, he sure. was doing really well, so he was just waiting for his breakfast, and he just decided to just leave. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord decided, actually. Right. And so, And then it was six months after that I was diagnosed with breast cancer, and I've been going through that journey this past year. So Yeah, so, wow. That's a long introduction, Gwen. I, you know, I... I <laughs> What you would want me to say, I've authored, I think, 16 or 17 books, and the yeah. one we're going to talk about is my latest, and, uh, and I love to write because there's no time limit. You know, when you speak, you're always in a program, and you've got to, you has got to be 30 minutes or 45 or 60, and you're, you know, but when you write, you can just write and let your heart pour out, and then you go back and edit, and you, you make it more concise, but, yes. uh, but I love to write, and love to write when I have something, I don't, I don't only do it when I have something on my heart that I feel God is put there for me to to write down for other people. So, and this book is one of those. So. Yeah. Well, I am really excited. First of all, thank you for for sharing all of those things and, and giving us that backdrop because that helps us understand where you're coming from in ministry. And I love when you said women can handle the deep places of the Bible. Come on, girl. That is so huge. That's the way we operate around here in the Graceology community. We have a lot of fun. We're very uh, casual in in our demeanor, but we are all about the deep places of the Word of God and the Lord. And so I applaud you for calling us up to a higher level of depth in faith. And I agree. The women in the the Word really gave us a beautiful picture of that. 
Yes. Yeah. When you mentioned that you love Gimme Jesus with Fernando Ortego. Okay, come on. That song is so amazing. In fact, this is a little behind the scenes glimpse that you would not be aware of. But in the times when you were caring for your husband, you and I were scheduled for an event in California together with Fernando for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Oh, sure. Yes. Yeah. Diego, I think. It was, yeah, it was, it was several years ago and, and Fernando was there and, and that was, it was a time when you chose, you had to be commit you know, committed to being at home for your husband. And I was so disappointed we didn't get to meet face to face then, but here we are on a computer, you know, <laughs> face to face <laughs> working it out. But I'll never forget Fernando singing that live too, because it's just, yeah. there's just such an anointing of that. So that yeah. was. It is very heartfelt. Yeah, definitely very heartfelt. So you share about these past several years have been you've gone through a dis- difficult season of life, and and I'm sure even as the daughter of you know Billy Graham that that had to be your processing of his passing and stepping into that age of of becoming an orphan and the grieving you do with your family it's so complicated anyway but to grieve alongside of the rest of the world because your dad was such a public figure was that harder easier what what were your thoughts on that I think grieving in public is always hard. Yeah. And I felt perhaps that was a little bit more so with my husband because his home going was very public. Mm-hmm. And so that was a little bit more difficult. But I found with my father, the world's grieving was a comfort. And I remember when we drove from Asheville to Charlotte about two and a half hours and we, he, we were taking him down from where he had lived to where he would be buried. And so we were on a motorcade and lining the motorcade for that entire two and a half journey um, drive, people were on either side, cars stopped on the opposite side of the road, but they also stopped on our side and they pulled off and people lined every overpass. There were fire engines with American flags and big banners hanging on the passes and people holding up Bibles or ha- their hands over their hearts. It was. And, and it was like the whole world, and I know it wasn't, it was North Carolina, you know, but they were mourning and grieving for daddy. And somehow I felt like the Holy Spirit used that to comfort me because, you know, when you're you're grieving and mourning and the world just keeps on going, it's like, wait a minute, the world needs to stop. You yes. know? <laughs> and the world seemed to stop in some places when my daddy went to heaven and just focus on him and his ministry and what he meant to them. And it was very precious. So... I look back on that and don't see it as being hard. I'll I'll look back and see it as being a blessing. Wow, that's so beautiful. I mean, I think in some ways, all of us, because we all did grieve with you, think that so many of us were just honored to have the opportunity to share in that grieving because he shared so much with the world. So that's that's really beautiful and that blesses my heart i got literally got chill bumps <laughs> while you were saying that because it just is it's so beautiful to think that it, it was a picture of the body even giving back and just yeah. loving yeah that's so cool it also gave opportunity for people to if i can use this term to sort of gossip the gospel yes because you know, he was all about that so yes. when people talk about him it's hard to talk about him and separate him from the cross and from john three sixteen. so so i think it gave an opportunity worldwide for the gospel to be given out again yes. in a fresh way to people who were paying attention. Yes. So so I think his home going was very significant. And when we get to heaven, we'll find out. I think it was very fruitful. Yes. Oh, I think so as well. I agree. Today's episode of the Graceology with Gwen Smith podcast is sponsored by FabFitFun. Guys, I'm so excited to let you know that the 2019 FabFitFun Fall Box is now on sale. Use coupon code GRACEOLOGY to receive $10 off your first box at FabFitFun.com. FabFitFun is a women's lifestyle subscription box with full-size beauty, fitness, fashion, and lifestyle products sent straight to your doorstep each season. And you get to customize some of the items in your box according to your own personal style and interests. It retails for $49.99, but always has a value of over $200. And when you use code GRACEOLOGY, your first box is only $39. 
My fall box is off the chain, you guys. I'm so excited about it. I got a ceramic flat iron by Amica that normally retails for $80, a really stylish slim striped wallet from Cut From The Cloth, and a full-size jar of Cosmetics Pure C to brighten my skin, all in my fall box. These boxes do sell out fast, guys, so sign up for yours today. Head over to fabfitfun.com and use coupon code GRACEOLOGY for $10 off your first box. So you mentioned John 316. It's my life verse, I do. I, I mean, it's one of mine. Mine, I think it's one of all of ours. But I even send out my blog on Tuesdays at three sixteen a.m. because <laughs> just it's it's uh-huh. that it's my number three sixteen, and yeah. uh, and so I appreciate it because it talks about you know God the Father, His love, and His sending Jesus so that we could have hope. But this new book that you're talking about is about the Holy Spirit, Jesus in me. So I know that you you preface this book by saying the Holy Spirit's not an optional extra in the Christian life, but but he is a divine necessity. So there's a lot of confusion and mystery and misunderstanding about the Holy Spirit. So talk about, even as we get started, I want to talk about this message that is just burning in your heart right now and in this book. And what the, what is the Holy Spirit not before we go into what he is? Well, the Holy Spirit is not a genie that's in a bottle. You rub him by faith and prayer and he pops out and does what you ask, you know, he's not a flame of fire. He's represented in scripture, you know, because he's invisible, then in scripture, he's symbolized by things. So we know we're where he's present. So a flame of fire at Pentecost or a dove at his baptism. And so, but he's not, he is not those things. He's just symbolized by those things. The Holy Spirit is a living person and he is the third person of the Godhead. But sometimes we think of him as a third person, like he's the PS to the more significant God, the father, and God, the son. Right. But he's not. The reason we think of him as a third person is because God, the father was primarily identified or or revealed in the Old Testament and God the Son in the Gospels, but it's God the Holy Spirit who's revealed primarily in the epistles and the rest of the New Testament. And uh, and Acts, you know, it's, uh, it's called Acts, and we think of it as the acts of the early church, but really it's the acts of the Holy Spirit through the early church and through the disciples. Yes. So the Holy Spirit is, um, because we're not familiar with him, he's sort of like, a, almost like a secret. And then people who major on him, they can, they can distort his image or distort something of how people view him mm-hmm. and make people either afraid of him or feel that they don't really need that and as though he is an optional extra. And so I, I wrote this book. It's not, it's not a summary of information. It's not a theological book like where I'm going to answer all the questions at all. It's, it's my personal experience of the Holy Spirit as a constant companion. Mm-hmm. And, and the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, I'm going to ask the Father and he will give you another counselor and another means someone exactly the same as so in other words he was a counselor and he was going to ask the father to give you another one exactly the same as himself and so the holy spirit is exactly the same as jesus it's distinctly different so don't misunderstand me a, a distinct person but the same emotions intellect will power it's just that he's invisible jesus is in a man's body. He's living in heaven. One day he'll come back to reign and rule on this earth in his man's physical body. We're going to see him. We're, we're, you know, we'll see the wound on his brow where the thorns have been, the wounds in his hands and feet. Yes. We're, we're going to see him visibly present. The Holy Spirit is Jesus invisible. Yes. And, and so he's Jesus in me because that's what Jesus said. In fact, it tells us in Colossians that, that this is a mystery, but it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yeah. So Jesus in me is just my experience of this invisible person that sometimes at the moment we may not recognize, but you can look back and think, oh my goodness, you know, he was right there. He gave me wisdom. He helped me through that. He gave me strength. He gave me direction. He gave me comfort. And and I, I look back on this past year, Gwen, with all of my cancer difficulties and decisions to make and options to choose. And, and I look back and, and I can see the Holy Spirit almost visible, you know, yes. has guided me through that maze until I've come out at this end, you know, have yet to have any conclusion to the matter. But, yeah. I, but I feel that I'm, I'm doing fine. And I feel like he's whispered 
to me that I'm going to be fine. And so, and, and if I'm not, if he decides to take me home tomorrow, then what he's whispered to me from Philippians is for me to live as Christ and to die as gain. Yes. But if I don't die, the next verse says, then it's because there's more fruitful labor for me to do. And so my husband went to heaven and that's a gain for him. God left me here because I have more fruitful labor and I'm still here. So I've you know, writing this book is part of what I pray will be fruitful labor for the Lord in the time I have left. Well, I believe it's going to be because I've had a chance to to really take some of it in and, and look it over. And I'm excited about, uh, first of all, you're such a good storyteller. You you are delightful. I felt like when I was reading, I was like, it, it was like we're just having a conversation. And you and you do. You share it well. But then you, again, it, there's there's those pools of depth that are that are beautiful. So I love the way you started it off and you were just talking about invisible versus visible and what I felt like when you started off the book with that story about your walking in the mornings and having a walking partner that it brought what was kind of an invisible relationship to a fresh understanding can you share that with my graceology community because I just thought it was powerful well, it's, it's just very simple. You know, I, I love to walk. And uh, since my surgery and all that, I can't run anymore. So walking is my exercise of choice. And if I have a friend, you know, we walk and our conversations, we can pray together. We can talk about world events together. We can talk about our children. And somehow the walk seems to go much quicker. It's, yes. it's much more enjoyable. And when I walk by myself, then I'm thinking, Oh my goodness, can I make it around this next bend? Oh my goodness, I can't believe I've just got a half mile to go. You know, oh my goodness, I make it to the car and I lean on the car while I do my stretches and it's and I've done it. And a same exercise, same length, you know, same distance, but it's not nearly it's more like drudgery yes. than it is when I have somebody to walk with. And so then I just turn that into the fact that I I need a walking partner for life. I need somebody. Otherwise, if you don't have a walking partner for life, then life can become a drudgery. It can be heavy. It can be depressing. It can be confusing. It can be fearful. But a walking partner that loves you, that understands you, that listens to what you have to say, that says meaningful things to you in return, that is there to comfort you and guide you and give you a perspective on what's happening in the world. And, And that's the Holy Spirit is like my life's walking partner. Yeah. And and so when I began looking for life's walking partner, all I had to do is look within because that's who the Holy Spirit is. He's there 24-7. Hebrews says he will never leave me. He'll never forsake me. Of course, I, I had to establish, I had to invite him in, Gwen. And can I make this clear? Because yes. when you... And I did this as a little girl. So I was a little girl, eight or nine years of age. It was on Good Friday. And I'd been watching a picture about Jesus on TV. And I knew when he died on the cross, he died for me. I just felt very convicted that it was my sin that put him on the cross. Mm. And so I asked him, I got on my knees and told him I was sorry. And I asked him to forgive me, to come into my heart. And I wanted to live for him. And I didn't understand all the details of that. But that was as simple as it was. And I believe at that point, I was born again, that Jesus came into my heart. He couldn't, Jesus can't come into us because he lives in a man's body up in heaven. So he he couldn't possibly come into us. But when we invite him to come in, he comes in, in the person of the Holy Spirit. I did not understand that at the time, but it doesn't make any difference because God knew what I was asking. And so In order to have the Holy Spirit living within you 24-7, never to leave nor forsake you, you must come to the cross, confess your sin, tell Jesus you're sorry, believe that he died as God's sacrifice for your sin to make atonement for you, claim his blood to cover you and, and cleanse you of your sin. Invite him to come into your heart. Ask him to give you eternal life. You know, and he does. He comes in. You're born again. And what's what's born again? What that means is that you know I still have Anne Graham Lots in my flesh, but inside of me. I have what Corinthians calls a new creation, a new mind to think the thoughts of God, new emotions to love people I don't even like, new will to do things that I just can't seem to do on my own. And it's it's the life of the Holy Spirit within me. I'm a new creation. And, And it's the Holy Spirit within me creating the life of Jesus within me that it becomes more and more when we live in him. It becomes more and more evident to even the people around us that it's not just us anymore, but there's something vibrant, something alive, something precious within us that I think if we live it out, it becomes contagious and other people want what we have. And what we have is Jesus in me, in the person of the Holy Spirit. 
Yes, absolutely. And that is the beginning of the life that we all long to have and to know and to experience. And I really love in your book that you First of all, you love a good alliteration, and I'm I'm with you, girl. As a <laughs> as a fellow Bible girl and and speaker, I I love to land on a good alliteration. You did that very well. So not only do you explore some facets of life with the Holy Spirit as our companion in a way that's really personable and really relatable and helps us to really kind of see what's unseen in some ways, but I also love that you break down and and not academically, but again relationally and scripturally the names of the Holy Spirit and obviously there's a bunch jam-packed in John chapter 16 uh, where there were 11 times and eight verses that the Holy Spirit is referenced but I, I really appreciated that we just got to go so street level saying you know he is our counselor and this is where he's been my counselor this is what the Bible says about him being our comfort you know what of those seven names while you were writing it where did you most resonate with? And I know that's kind of like, which of your children is your favorite? Yeah. Well, the names came from John 16, and it's the amplified version of the Bible that takes the word counselor or comforter. I can't remember which the NIV uses, but but it takes, and it gives us alternate translations. Yes. So he's our comforter, our counselor, our advocate, our intercessor, our standby, our strengthener, our helper. Not sure if I got seven in there, but anyway. I think you and, did. <laughs> And so it's each one of those. And I don't know if I could single out uh, one more than another. I feel like this past year, he's been my helper, Mm -hmm. uh, getting me through all of my treatments, helping me make the right decisions, helping me. Now I'm the sort of the matriarch in my family where I have three children, their spouses, my grandchildren. And and that responsibility, I didn't know until my husband left, is almost a heavy responsibility. Sure. And I didn't I just never realized that because my husband shouldered it so well. And and the husband, the father in the family, and if there are any, I don't know if any of them listen to you, but but that's a very awesome responsibility, and it's a high privilege to be the head of a family. But in my case, then, in a sense, I'm the matriarch now. And so taking on that responsibility, I, I needed his help. I needed his help in how to tell my children it was one year to the day that their father had gone to heaven and to tell them on that very day that I had breast cancer. You know, I, I needed his help in how to present that to them. I needed, and he has helped me. Every step of the way, not once has he let me down. And I look back, Gwen, on this past year with all the the horror, really, of surgery and chemotherapy and radiation. And what I remember are the blessings. Mm-hmm. When I think back on this past year, it, it doesn't stand out as a horror to me. It stands out as a bl- blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing. And so his help, I know I wouldn't have been blessed like that. I know I wouldn't have been carried through like that had he not helped me yeah. uh, every moment of every day on the inside, not just helping me with practical things, but helping me with emotional things, spiritual things, mental things. And he, and so the helper, but I don't know if you could single out when he's given me strength, sure. he's given me counsel, I, you know, so it's hard to sing, single out one, but, but I look at that and, and I think, you know, I, I couldn't have made it through without him and his help this past year stands out. I love it. Well, let's stay there for a minute because I know that some of the listeners are like, yes, I want him to be my helper. I need clarity and direction. So let's go real practical. Like, what did that look like? How did you get him to help you, if you will? Like, break that down for the Graceology community who are desperate for the help of the Holy Spirit, but they just don't know, even know what does that look like? How does that happen? You know, you don't have to get him to help you. He is the helper. Yes. <laughs> so he. So the, so what you have to do is tune your heart to him. Yes. You know, tune your spiritual ears to him. And I did that even going through chemo and radiation when I would sleep till eleven or twelve. You know, noon. I just I just had such hard time getting out of bed. But the first thing I did was spend time with him yes. once I got out of bed in prayer and Bible reading. And so when I read my Bible, I just take a paragraph. And I ask myself, what does it say? I list the facts. Mm -hmm. And what does it mean? I I draw a lesson from each one of those facts. And what does it mean in my life? I turn the lesson into a question I would ask myself. And and I just go through a paragraph every morning and I pray about it. I have other devotional things. I use a little volume 
called Daily Light that I republished, and it's just a compilation of scriptures morning and evening. I use that to sort of spring into prayer and pray about what he's talking about in there. And and he would just, then I would lay before him, you know, the, one of the first big things he helped me with um, besides just getting through the diagnosis was then what, now what do I do? Where do I go? And so I took the recommendation of my gynecologist and went to a surgeon that my primary care doctor said was excellent. But after going through some meetings with her, I felt like I was not with the right doctor. And Mm -hmm. that was the first time I felt fear in this whole journey because I was faced with a life-threatening illness and I felt like I was in the wrong place and I didn't know what to what to do, or where to go. And so I just told him, you know, I just said, please help me. And I, no sooner had I prayed that on a Monday morning than that noon, I was having lunch with a sister-in-law and a, a very good friend who had been through a horrific cancer. And at the end of that conversation, I told them what I was facing. I hadn't told anybody except my family and didn't want to tell anybody, but I told them. My sister-in-law began to cry. The other one just got up, got out her phone, handed me her cell phone after a minute, and she had the head of the Lineberger Cancer Institute from the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill on the phone, yeah. and and he just set up appointments for me, and I went over there and met with, you know, the, the ones, the surgeons and the oncologists that he had selected and knew that that was the right place for me, and, and the Holy Spirit, almost before I could get that prayer out, almost before I recognized that I was in the wrong place, he already had prepared that lunch. We had planned lunch four months before because we're all so busy. And yes. four months before that luncheon had been planned, but on the very day when I was desperate for help. And, and that's the way the Holy Spirit works. You, Because he's invisible and he's silent, so to speak, he, he'll he nudge you, he'll whisper to you through the scriptures, he'll arrange practical circumstances. And sometimes it's not till you look back and you think, oh my goodness, you yeah. know, I cannot believe it took us for four months we've been waiting to have lunch together and we had lunch and at the very time when I needed some advice and counsel and and look at what I got you know (laughs) he's so amazing yeah and every every step along the way he he did that for me so um, well he's very personal with us but what I what I heard so vibrantly and I hope that all my Graceology girls are picking up is that Ann Graham Lotz just because she is Billy Graham's daughter just because she is a a Bible teacher with a platform does not have any extra special uh, direct line to God what she has in place in her life is the spiritual disciplines of getting with Jesus that's right. And you have to have that, Gwen. Yeah, that's have to have that. It's the it's the core of who I am. Yes. So you can't it doesn't have platforms and you know all that's uh, never mind. And it just exactly if you want to be authentic, if you want a vibrancy yes. in your relationship with Jesus, if you want your faith to be strong enough to handle the storms of life and the bends in the road, you know yes. you have to spend time in the word, and I don't mean just reading it to check it off that I read it today. I mean reading it and listening for God to speak to you through it, which is how I do that little exercise. And and I'm going to say, which I normally don't, but but um, if you go to my website, annegramlots.org, and there I put on there videos how to, how you can listen to the whispers of the Holy Spirit. At the back of this book, this um, book on the Holy Spirit, I do a whole chapter on how to listen to the whispers of the Holy Spirit. So, so I can help you in that, but you need to develop that listening ear because he will whisper and he whispers through his word. He can nudge you through prayer. But if after prayer, I felt led to do something that would affect, you know, a decision that would affect other people. And so I want that confirmed in scripture. So if I can just go back this past year, I think it was after my fifth chemo treatment, I had reacted so badly that I wanted to get out. I just couldn't do it anymore. And And so I was praying and I felt that God answered in prayer and just very clearly told me through prayer. I felt like he said that I was healed. It it was it was gone. It was over. And so I told him the next morning, I I went back to to remind him of what I thought he had said to me in prayer. But then I said, I want to hear from your word. I do not want to make a decision to get out of chemo based on an impression when I was praying. So speak to me through your word. And within two hours, my daughter, my youngest daughter came over and she teaches a Bible class and and she was sharing with me what she was going to teach. And she was teaching from Second Kings. And I think it was chapter five or six about Naaman, the Syrian general who had leprosy. And he came to Elisha and Elisha told him to go dip in the Jordan River seven times yes. and then he would be healed. And Naaman said, I don't want to do that. You know, it's Jordan River is muddy, dirty, seaweed. I've got better rivers in Syria. And then his servant said, you know, Elisha told you something difficult. 
you would do it, but, but just dip here and see. And so he dipped seven times and it came up out of the water. And right there, it says in scripture, he was healed. Mm-hmm. And, and I had seven, I had two more chemo treatments to go to make seven times. And I felt God was saying to me from scripture, Ann, finish out your chemo treatments and yes, you'll be healed. And so I finished them out and I finished uh, fairly strong. And then I had to go through the, I, I went through the radiation because I felt God was also saying, submit to your doctors. Mm. You need to do what your doctors tell you. And they felt very strong. I tried to get out of it, but, <laughs> but they felt very strong that I needed to go through radiation. So yeah. I did. So yeah. I just, so I will tell you that he, he can whisper, he can nudge you through prayer. But when it comes to a decision like that, or one that involves other people or a job or a school or how I want him to speak to me through his word. And he yes. does that when a passage just leaps up and it just speaks exactly to what I've been praying or what I've been asking him. And in that particular case, it was very specific. So when I shared it to other people, even could hear the Lord speaking to him and telling me to finish out the chemo. Love it. That's awesome. He's so personal with us that way. And that's what it looks like to tune your heart to him. It is not just going with with total nudging, but then also just confirming with scripture. And I'm really glad that you shared the videos. And I'm just saying, if if you're listening and you want to find those videos that Anne referenced on how to listen to the whispers of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to put a link to those straight from the show notes page. So you can simply go to gwensmith.net slash graceology, find my episode with Anne Graham Lotz, and we're going to have links to the book, links to those videos, quotes, all of the recap of our conversation so that if you're doing laundry or if you are driving down the road, we got gotcha. you. Just head over to gwensmith.net slash graceology and we'll make sure sure you have links to all of those. Thank you, Brad. Thanks. Absolutely. So, Anne, one of the things you talk about in your book is, is loving the person of the Holy Spirit. How has God been teaching you? How has the Spirit of God been teaching you to love him as the Holy Spirit? I think as you get to know him, Gwen, yeah. that you can't help but love him. It's, it's like Jesus. He's Jesus in me. And one of the things uh, when I did a study on the Holy Spirit several years ago, I came across that verse that says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And that just caused me to pause. And once again, it's like a whisper, you know, but grief is a love word. I grieve for my husband because I love him and he's not here anymore. I grieve for my father because I loved him. He's not here anymore. You, you don't grieve unless there was love there, you know? And so when it says not to grieve the Holy Spirit, I felt like that was telling me that the Holy Spirit loves me, yeah. that when I do something wrong, he grieves. And when I do something right, he rejoices that he's emotionally caught up in my life. And I, I thought, you know, when I received Christ by faith, that the Holy Spirit came into me, he's Jesus in me, that he was sort of assigned to me. <laughs> he had to, you know, God said, all right, I'm, you know, you need to go into Anne. And so he goes in and he's my professional partner. And then one day he'll just present me to the father and say, well, I did the best I could. And here she is. <laughs> But, but it's not like that at all. Right. He comes into me because he, he, the Holy Spirit loves me and he's emotionally involved in my life and he's caught up in who I am and his, his purpose is to glorify Jesus in and through me. He wants me to be fully developed in my potential to become the person that God intended me to be when he created me. And so the Holy Spirit is, he's for me, yes. you know, t- totally. He understands me. He loves me. He answers me. He leads me. He guides me. He's he's closer to me than anyone on the outside, any member of my family. You know, my mother was someone who it was very hard to lose her, but hard harder for her me to have her leave than daddy because my mother was someone who as a mother does understood me loved me I didn't have to explain myself to her I didn't have to defend myself to her or excuse me she just she got it you know and and she prayed for me with that kind of insight and understanding and then when she left it's like now who's gonna who's gonna take up that slack who's gonna love me like that Mm -hmm. who's going to comfort me who's going to pray for me with understanding who's going to and, and it's the Holy Spirit you know the Holy Spirit it says he prays for us and prays for us sometimes without words. He doesn't need words because he, he gets our feelings and he can transmit them to the Father. And he's as precious as my mother was and still is in my memories. The Holy Spirit is that and more. Mm-hmm. So he lives within me, but he's for me. He's committed to me. He's all the things we look for sometimes in a spouse or a parent or maybe a best friend. And he, he's more than that. And he's perfect. So he, And he never... He never breaks the confidence. He never spins the truth. He's never out for himself. You know, you can trust him. Totally trustworthy. 
Well, I know that even as you're speaking, hearts are swirling with excitement of the truth, but also just longing to to know the Holy Spirit deeper, because I don't think there's ever a point when we get to the point where we're like, okay, I know you enough. It's give me more. And I'm inspired by these stories that you shared and what you've learned. And I'm super excited about the message of Jesus in me, this new book about experiencing the Holy Spirit as your constant companion. Would you mind, Anne, if if we wrap up our time together, would you mind praying for my listeners for the Graceology community just to really uh, to be able to experience the Holy Spirit as their companion in deep and personal ways? Yes, I, I would love to, Gwen. So uh, just pray with me for a moment. So, Father, we come before you with praise and thanksgiving. You're the God of creation, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who loved us so much that when Jesus came back to heaven, you didn't leave us like orphans, but you sent down his spirit to live within us. When we come to the cross, confess our sin, repent, invite Jesus to come in, thank you that the Holy Spirit does come in never to leave us, never to forsake us, to, to create within us a new life, Jesus living in us with his mind as well as emotions. And so we, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. And I pray for those who have been listening, that even now the Holy Spirit, you, you say in your word that he quickens us, that you would even now, Lord, be, be causing those spiritual flutters <laughs> to go on in the hearts and minds of the listeners, that they would feel drawn and quickened to come to know you and know you better through the person of the Holy Spirit. And, and we don't necessarily put our focus on the Holy Spirit. Our focus is on Jesus. But Lord, we wouldn't know Jesus except for the Holy Spirit. And so we ask, please, that you would use this conversation to uh, quicken our spiritual hearts and lives, that we might stop ignoring him and neglecting him and thinking of him as an optional extra, but that we might truly worship you in spirit and in truth as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so I ask that, uh, Lord, that you would give wings to this book, not for any self-promotion or any other reason than I believe, Lord, you've given me these experiences so that I can make them relevant and, as Gwen has said, street level, practical for those who are listening, that they might come to know and love and enjoy the constant companionship of the one who is Jesus in me, the Holy Spirit. So bless this conversation. We ask that you would use it to bear much fruit for your kingdom, and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The book is called Jesus in Me. Experiencing the Holy Spirit as a constant companion. And my guest today has been Anne Graham Lotz. Anne, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Gwen. God bless you and God bless your listeners. What an amazing conversation with Anne. Wow. Be sure to visit her website and grab a copy of that book. Today's show was edited by Chad Shooping, and the music is by PremiumBeat.com. If you'd like to talk about having me speak at your next women's event, or if you have questions, comments, or topic suggestions, hey, I love hearing from you. Send me a message directly from my website, which is GwenSmith.net. All of the links and the show notes from today's episode with Anne can be found at GwenSmith.net slash Graceology. That's GwenSmith.net slash Graceology. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, if you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and click your podcast app and hit the subscribe button. Subscriptions and reviews on iTunes and all podcast apps really make a difference to those of us who are working hard to bring you these shows. And be sure to connect with me on social media. I'm at Gwen Smith Music on every platform, and the show is at Graceology on every platform. Now get out there and have a beautiful, grace-filled day.